In the first century near Jerusalem, thousands of people witnessed the violent and graphic execution of Jesus by the occupying Romans. Seeing crucified men hanging on poles along Roman roads was not that unusual at the time. What was unusual is that in the weeks that followed the crucifixion of Christ, hundreds of people saw him very much alive and healthy, eating, talking, and teaching. What if I told you that the full range of scholars in the field nearly unanimously grant these ancient testimonials, but what were they seeing? Hi, I'm Kirk and I'm a scientist and a philosopher and a person who spends a lot of time thinking about the why questions in life. So if you're interested in discussions pertaining to God, science and life, then uh, please subscribe to my channel here where I'll be posting on a regular basis. You can also subscribe to my social media accounts and the links are below. I totally understand if you find it difficult to believe that the post-crucifixion appearances of Jesus actually happened. I myself have heard people claim that they saw some person who actually died some years earlier, but I usually give zero credibility to such claims. So why would Jesus of Nazareth be any different? Probably the first thing we should do is check out what the scholars say. New Testament scholar Gary Habermas performed a survey of academic publications spanning a period of 35 years covering 3,000 sources in English, French, and German. His objective was to catalog the positions of the full range of academic scholars in the field, including atheists, agnostics, non-religious, as well as religious, on a wide variety of topics to do with the life of Jesus of Nazareth. Was there a consensus on some points? Were there points where there was near unanimous agreement? There were many things he found a consensus on, but only four things that the full range of scholars in the field unanimously or nearly unanimously grant as historical fact. The first fact was that Jesus performed feats that both he and his followers interpreted as miracles. Note that the full range of scholars are not saying that they were actual miracles, only that they were feats that the people understood to be miracles. The second historical fact that is nearly unanimously granted is that Jesus viewed himself as the promised Messiah, the savior of humanity. The third fact is that he died by crucifixion. I should mention that many people believe without any historical evidence that Jesus was somehow rescued from being crucified. But the historical evidence from both Christian and non-Christian Roman sources clearly states that he died by crucifixion. The fourth historical fact is that shortly after Jesus' death, his followers had experiences that led them to believe and proclaim that he had risen from the dead and had appeared to them. The full range of academic scholars are not saying that people actually saw Jesus. No, what they grant is that they had experiences that led them to believe and proclaim that Jesus had appeared to them. Keep in mind that the reason scholars almost unanimously grant this is because there is simply too much historical evidence from both ancient Christian and non-Christian sources to seriously dispute this. One example of such a source is the Apostle Paul who recorded an event where Christ appeared to a group of approximately 500 people, the majority of whom were still alive when he wrote his first letter to the Corinthians. All these appearances ended exactly 40 days after the crucifixion with one exception. The Apostle Paul was a highly committed enemy of Christianity, but after seeing Jesus on the road to Damascus, he totally did an about face. The full range of scholars are almost unanimous that Paul actually had that experience of seeing the risen Christ, even if they do not wish to grant that it was Jesus Christ he actually saw. What this means is that if you brought those witnesses into court today and asked them to swear to tell the whole truth, the truth and nothing but the truth, and then ask them if they literally saw Jesus in a very real physical form after his crucifixion, they would say yes. So how do the scholars account for what they call these experiences? The thing to think about is this. If I wish to deny that all those people actually saw Jesus, 
I still must explain those experiences which is exactly what the scholars in the academic world try to do. There are actually six or seven major theories to account for these first century experiences of seeing Jesus for a period of 40 days after his crucifixion. Of those, only one theory posits that Jesus actually rose from the dead and that the appearances therefore were very real. None of the remaining theories grant that the appearances were physical. Instead, a variety of psychological or spiritual explanations are proposed. One scholar, Michael Lacona, has done an extremely rigorous examination using five criteria used by historians of each of the competing theories to see, first of all, which gives the best explanation, number two, how plausible each one is given the generally agreed upon historical facts, third, how well the theory accounts for the facts, fourth, how good the explanation is, and fifth, if it also explains other historical facts or problems. His analysis is contained in a 700-page book called The Resurrection of Jesus, A New Historiographical Approach. At the end of his detailed, rigorous analysis, Lacona shows that only one theory satisfies all the historiographical criteria, and that was that Jesus actually rose from the dead and appeared physically to people where they could touch him, eat with him, and hear him talking to entire groups of people. So let's think about this for a moment. First of all, this does not prove that Jesus rose from the dead, but what it does do is show that among the six or seven historical theories concerning what happened, the most rational position to take is that people actually saw the risen Jesus in physical form for a period of 40 days after the crucifixion. Now you might be wondering, why can't we simply eliminate that option since it would require a miracle? But that is exactly what we're trying to determine. Did a miracle occur here or not? Looking at it from a different angle, we cannot simply say every time we observe a miracle that it can't be a miracle because miracles can't happen. That's a form of circular reasoning or assuming your conclusion in your opening premise. Still, we have not proved that Jesus physically appeared to these first century people, but that is not the only argument we have to consider when trying to decide if Jesus actually rose from the dead. There are three other highly unusual pieces of evidence that I discussed in the three videos before this. So let's put all four pieces of evidence together to see what the implications are. First, there are where ancient prophecies of the Messiah that we know with certainty and we can verify existed before the time of Christ and that some of those prophecies seem to indicate that he would be killed but not stay dead. This is unique in human history. Nowhere else do we have ancient prophecies that we can verify existed long before the person appeared in history. In fact, authentic Christianity is the only religion in the world that started thousands of years before its founder, in this case, Jesus the Messiah or Christ, showed up in history. Second, we know from ancient Roman sources that there was an explosion of belief that Jesus had risen from the dead that swept throughout the Roman Empire within a few decades of Christ's crucifixion and ground zero was Jerusalem. This is not a religious belief. It is an historical fact based on non-Christian Roman sources. This too appears to be unique in all of human history. There have been many religions, but none have been observed to experience blowed over such a large part of the civilized world so swiftly as this within a few decades. Third, we have confirmation from a non-Christian source that the location of the tomb was known, it had been guarded by Roman soldiers, and it was empty on the third day. And finally, we have the resurrection appearances for a period of 40 days after the crucifixion. Each one of these is remarkable. Astronomer Carl Sagan is famous for his quote, extraordinary claims require extraordinary evidence. The claim that Jesus of Nazareth was the long prophesied Messiah and rose physically from the dead is an extraordinary claim. But these four historical phenomena we have just looked at are extremely extraordinary. So extraordinary that each one of them is unique in history. Yet history seems to indicate that these four highly unusual events happened. As I've emphasized, this does not prove with certainty that Jesus did rise from the dead, but we can conclude two things. First, 
The evidence consists of four extraordinary historical phenomenon. Second, of the different conclusions we could arrive at, the one that has the best rational basis from a historiographical perspective is that around 33 AD, a man who claimed he was the promised Messiah was brutally executed, exactly as prophesied, but then rose physically back to life on the third day after his crucifixion. So what does this mean for us? Perhaps something Jesus said summarizes best why it's relevant to us today. He said, This is the will of my Father, that everyone who beholds the Son and believes in him will have eternal life, and I myself will raise him up on the last day. If his body was still in the tomb to this day, we would have zero reason to take this claim seriously. But if he rose physically from the dead, then we have good reason to conclude that he is the long-promised Messiah, the Christ, and that he can raise each one of us up on the last day if we put our faith in him. Well, I hope you enjoyed the video or at least found it thought provoking. And if you did, please share it or you can leave a comment in the section below. And also, don't forget to hit the like button.